Hey everybody, it's a random, just a total random stream of consciousness, so let's get it. Man, it's hot out here. It's in the 80s, low 80s. Hello, how are you guys doing? I know I didn't plan it. I didn't plan it. I was just uh, texting uh, Max and Ron on the side and seeing what they were up to. Um, been doing a lot of thinking after my <laughs> after my last live, uh, the Cry Fest 222, 2022, I should say. Um, no, I've just been doing a lot of thinking, and and you know, man, you know, wondering if something would work. And so the question of the day is, um, is that possible? Is anybody doing it? Um, and what would it look like? I mean, how would it work? You know, um, uh, you know, for you, Piper, you're, you're in here all the time and, um, I know you don't get out, but maybe you have skills or thoughts or ideas um, and could be a part of a team in some way. And if so, you know, what team would you join? What team would you be a part of? Who, you know, whether or not you'd want to be a part of. And I don't know what that means yet. And I'm, I'm thinking about it. Um, trying to see what that would look like. You know, how would you build a virtual team? So I was thinking today. And Max has said this before, so this is nothing new. This is me ripping off Max just because I can't, and he doesn't have a live show. So, um, <laughs> But he talked about bringing an arborist on board, you know, or at least talking with an arborist or going out one time with an arborist. But what if, like Piper, what if you knew of an arborist and could put them in touch with me? What if somebody else knew of an archaeologist and wanted, hey, you need to meet Matt? You know, uh, he's doing some stuff in the woods and you may be interested. Um, I had a bunch of other ideas from uh, biologists to I know. Um, and, and I tell you what, I tell you what, um, Mike, Tactical Bigfoot Research is already doing this. Uh, Doug Highcheck and Jeff uh, is already doing this. They're, they're working with people um, and have built a network. And they those people not necessarily go out with them. But they're a part of that team in some way with uh, guidance, uh, background knowledge, or, or what have you. In my instance, um, you guys know I'm, I'm on just finished Chapter 6 of the Corridor. corridor. Um, I'm working on Chapter 7. You know, what, what if um, I had someone in the background doing research on areas that I was moving into? Um, animals, plants poison ivy, um, what type of trees, swamp am I going to run into? Um, have there been sightings there before? I necessarily don't do that. I, I never have done that. I don't um, follow the uh, 
you know, the Bigfoot uh, mapping project map. And well, because I've always said, if I had a sighting, I'm not sure I would put it on there, you know, until I was, you know, done working it or done forming my conclusions of, of what happened there. What did I see? Was it what I thought I saw? That sort of thing. So, but what if, what if someone was, um, in the background behind the curtain, um, assisting in some way. And then I thought, well, why would anyone do that? You know, why would anyone want to do that? Um, what could I offer for that? So I don't know. I'm just, I'm just kind of vetting this through you guys and, and see what it would be like. But, um, you know how some people do Patreon and, and at the end, you know, you become a producer or they list you in the credits or that sort of thing. Maybe it's something like that. Maybe, maybe I have virtual team members and, and someone's an arborist or, or maybe you pre-screen the films. Maybe before I release them, you all pre-screen them and say, I wouldn't do that because of this or that sort of, yeah, Mary, yeah, soil type, prevailing winds, growing season, sunrise, sunset. I have a lot of that on my watch. Um, I do do the basic stuff like that. <laughs> but I could use someone to tell me to remember to take water. <laughs> the last three trips, I went out and did not drink a bottle of water the whole time because I get so enamored and involved with the research, guys. I, I my, my head is on a swivel. Um, I'm, I'm dealing with cameras, multiple cameras. I'm dealing with uh, camera setup and two camera shots, and I'm always thinking about stuff like that. I don't do the place the camera way up the, head, uh, the the trail and walk into it and walk out and then go get it. And then, yeah, you know, I'm not making a movie like that. I'm more um, I'm more doing a, a real um, in the moment sort of documentary of the day. This is what happened, um, and I'm just thinking. There's a lot of stuff I'm missing. Like the last live I did, I talked about vetting and how frustrating that was and not having enough time. And I'm thinking, well, what if I had a group, two, three people, maybe one of them's a filmmaker. Maybe, again, one of them knows, uh, um, you know, plants real well. Um, I used, uh, and, and man, I, I, I got to think, you know I, know, I know I griped a little bit the last time about uh getting stuff vetted but uh we only have 10 people right now so i was kind of i was kind of wait waiting a little bit but in hindsight that that did go very well because you know five or six or seven key people uh stepped up and they were the people i i wanted to hear about they were the people that would matter most to me but then i started thinking then I started thinking, and the problem is, and I think Max pointed out the flaw, is that if you have a Bigfoot photographer vet a Bigfoot photo, they may be pre-biased to thinking it's a, it's a Bigfoot. If you have a Bigfoot audio person, Bigfoot, you know, vet an audio, they may be predestined to, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying that could be a problem. That could be a problem with anyone's research. I mean, and so Max's suggestion was, no, 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 you need to take it someone totally outside, outside Bigfoot world to run the audio, to vet the audio. I went, oh, well, brilliant point. But I can tell you what, if I walked up to, um, you know, I've worked with audio people. I, 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 I work with a narrator um, for the stuff I do at News Channel 8 all the time. Um so they have their home studios and I could tell them, hey, what does this sound like to you? But I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't tried it, so I really shouldn't assume that they're not going to be able to help with that. But that would be kind of weird. Um, but it's a good point he brought up because we're all, whether we want or claim to be or, or don't think we are, I think everybody who's watching tonight <laughs> has a bias of Bigfoot. That we're looking for Bigfoot, you know, right? So you're going to nod your head when someone says a howl was a Bigfoot. You're going to nod your head when you when they show you a dark stump and they, they and they claimed it moved. Um, we don't know. But I, I try to do a lot in the filmmaking process myself with the I call the magic bubble, the enlargement. I'm trying to shoot. Um, 
you know, I've gotten off track. Uh, I've gotten off track from using the big Lumix to going with the, the iPhone Pro 13. And I, <laughs> I said, I'd never say that. Don't shoot with an iPhone, but chapters five and six was made with an iPhone, guys. Um, most of the time it was on 4K unless it defaulted off, which, which tripped me up a couple times. But um, yeah, and Diesel, Diesel has a point too. Um, I like that. Start knocking out these ideas one by one, keep a list and try it out. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I'm thinking. Um, that's, that's exactly what I'm thinking is that you guys in the chat all have some skill. It may be you're good with computers, you're good with researching, you're good with, um, and that's, you know, I need that. I need someone that I can share my areas with and that I feel I could trust and maybe produce a film and two or three people to look at it and say, this is garbage, you're leading the witness, you're making assumptions, you got Bigfoot on the brain, or this is a fair balanced piece. You know, I don't want to be CNN, I don't want to be Fox, and I don't want to be political, but um, but I think there's a way to do it. And um, like I said, Max um, Max had this idea with a botanist for a botanist for a um, arborist for a long time. Um, and I believe me, I've checked around. I've I made contacts to the local universities. I tried to vet a couple of things with the local universities tell them that i was an archaeology anthropology student i studied with dr gluckman it was back in the early 80s can you take a look at this i did not send it under um my bigfoot email signature matter of fact i think i sent it as uh i think i sent it matt matt larson mac.com i don't think i sent it with my m larson you know news channel 8 sort of thing but anyway uh, Patrick Vaughn says, people's life experience, however limited or unlimited, will have an effect on their perceptions and interpretations. Are you saying that's a good thing or a bad thing? But, but yeah, I mean, we all have biases. We, we all have, um, on, yeah, we all have perceptions, and, and they're probably predestined in, to some sort. But, yeah. Um, um, an artist for a living last 12 years. And Diesel, I hear you. I mean, my wife's a fine artist. She's been full-time now for 12 years. And we've both been doing fine art exhibitions, museum exhibitions, gallery exhibitions for over 30 years. So I hear you on that. And, and that's a great uh, skill set to bring to the game. Um, but what I'm talking is how can you up your game and how can I up my game by using people with skill sets um, and knowledge? Like, I need an audio person. Uh, hang on. Let me. I just realized I left my dehumidifier on. Hang on. It's kicking on and off. That's probably all you're hearing. Woo -hoo. Bye bye, dehumidifier. Sorry about that. Um, but it would be cool to have uh, different people, with different skill sets. Like, you know, I had the big audio thing come up um, in, in, in uh, chapter five where we heard three howls. Um, Joey and I was out, we were, um, we were actually on the Florida trail and went off the Florida trail, but for the main purposes, it, it was kind of the Florida trail, but it was, and it wasn't, but that's the closest, um, I can give you. Um, we heard those howls and it drove me crazy, you know, what to do with them, bury them, sit on them, do what? And, and I'm not the type to to sit on it but then when you throw it out there you're quickly accused of being like the other 99 channels out of 100 that are just sensationalizing it and that's not my it, you know if anyone thinks i'm in that category at all just go follow somebody else because that's not what i'm about um i'm legitimately trying to find stuff and even if it's not good enough i want someone to look at it and say well what do you think because it at least tells me hey that's an area you should stay in or i don't think you're seeing anything matt and that's fine that's the kind of stuff i'm looking for um you know feedback move on and for some reason man people are just um you know i don't know if we offer good feedback to a lot of us out there who who does um big footing and and maybe we should. 
Uh, Hike with Mike says, Campfire Steve is always in the green soft exploring for the search of the skunk ape. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know that. And, and off, off the Florida trail, that's kind of where we were um, with the howls. I mean, big swamp, green swamp, <laughs> big swamp, green swamps, a big area. Um, Florida trail goes on both sides all the way through the management district. So we were off the Florida trail. Um, but that, but that's the thing. I mean, it'd be interesting to, you know, I, I think I said during my rant last time, um, Hey, you're just, you're just upset. You're not invited to the party or something like that. I, I wasn't even sure what that meant, but, um, okay. Then I want to, I want to make sure I have a party, <laughs> you know what I, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna, um, I guess what I'm doing is I, I'm I'm playing with the idea of building a virtual team. So if you have a skill set, if it's research, if it's uh, plants, if it's wildlife, if it's you know maybe you know a lot about you know um, reptiles, maybe you know a lot about snakes, maybe you know a lot about plants. One thing I haven't done is really vetted the area of what is uh you know what is edible out there, and or am I in an area that is pretty much well i know there's i know there's hog and hog activity i know there's alligator i just watched a great cooking show today of someone demonstrating the areas of of gator and 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 what what different parts of the the gator tasted like it, he was a five-star michelin chef and um actually it was on uh, the morning show this morning um so that was pretty cool so i mean i i know there's i know the proteins out there but i'm not familiar with the plant so I'm looking for someone like that. So in this broadcast here, we're, we're up to 14 people. Um, I think most people know my email address. I want I want to put it out there and just shoot me an email. It's going to be, I'm not going to take everybody to tell you the truth and and don't get mad. It's just, I don't want the team to be too big, but I, I want to see if, um, and I'm not talking about someone to go out hiking with. I mean, I got Ron and I got Max and, and you know, our, our team is, or, you know, it's not even a team. It's just like, the people we like to hike with is set and, you know, it's people um, that can trust each other. And, and, and unless it's max, I mean, if it wrong goes down, I'm helping them out. Max, you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, depends on, you know, what he's eating that day and whether or not I think I can drag him too far, but I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But no, we trust each other. And uh, I, so I'm not necessarily, it's not to say, it would be someone that we we bring out and that that maybe has a kayak that maybe um, um, is into possible night sets or overnight stuff. You know, maybe um, I know I can't get out that much. So who am I? I'm, I'm, you know, on on the group of three I just mentioned, Ron, Max, and me. It's like I'm the one that hasn't done it yet. So so I'm I'm the wimp there. But um, but it's not to say that maybe there's a skill you know, survivalist out there with kayak skills that, hey, I wouldn't mind him being my second in a kayak if I was going to do something crazy and sleep overnight in the swamp with gators and potential Sasquatch and feral hogs and that sort of thing. Um, the whole key is is safety and knowledge and good knowledge and making the videos better. I think that's the key is who who can come on and and be in the background and if you do a lot of work and you're in the background you're researching areas for me and you're telling me the highs the low of course florida doesn't have a lot of ridges and that sort of thing but you know what i mean just looking at type um uh, topo maps and and really um you know being a scout uh, you know an armchair scout and bringing to the table what you can bring back you know maybe i could produce a video and at the end it says you know team thanks to team members bloom and and you run in the credits um that's I'm not, I'm not going to pay anybody. I mean, right now, unless something good happens, but I mean, that's what I'm offering is, is you guys who are here week after week, after week, after week, and you want to get involved, but you, for some reason, you may not be able to, you may be, uh, you know, in a wheelchair, you may be on crutches, you may have asthma, you, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, you know, maybe it's something um, you could be a part of. So that's my crazy idea for tonight. And I just wanted to throw it out there. So, yeah. Um, yes. And I have, um, there is someone within 20 miles of me who reached out about nine months ago with, um, not, not that, I picked the wrong one. <laughs> this one. 
<laughs> oh god i did it again this one military people would be great um i had a gentleman um from north tampa area who reached out to me and gave me a solid background and said he wanted to go out and he's never been out you know and i kind of i kind of dismissed it at the time just because i talked about it before if you don't know people you know it's kind of hard to uh you know because you got to kind of got to vet them in some way and do that but um you know, may, you know, maybe he would be someone and he he said, maybe we can meet somewhere in North Tampa, have coffee one morning and just chit chat. And he was all about survival skills and military. And another guy reached out to me with wicked. He said he had wicked tracking that he did tracking for the government. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's urban tracking of suspects running down an alley or if it was, um, you know, something else in the woods. But um uh, but you definitely would have to have a love of swamps. So Patrick, you're out. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, and I am in Central Florida. I'm in Hillsborough County, and I work uh, Hillsborough County, Pasco County, Polk, Citrus. So far, I've been down to Manatee, Sarasota, my my River State Park. I've been all the way down to the Highlands, but. This particular project I'm working on this year is the corridor, which is Hillsboro, Pasco, Polk, Citrus, going from South Hillsboro. It actually starts up in Pas um, Pasco, drips down back down to Hillsboro, and then shoots back up out in the green swamp. If you look at a map, you'll see the green corridor. So that's kind of working now. And I have an area that I need to move into, and... Um, it requires kayak and it requires um, some skills. And I don't think it's a place where I want to be solo. So the last two weekends I tried to get out and uh, could not make it out because I could not find um, people at the right time to go. Um, and in something like that where portage is involved and you're getting out in knee waist deep waters and al alligator infested waters, I'm, I'm not going to do a solo on that. So I want to be having someone, you know, one person gets out, pulls the boat up, the other one's watching the other's back, and then vice versa for helping them out. Well, you know, we move the kayaks over around the log and we get back in. But, um, you know, that's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. But, again, it, it, it may be a person to, to, to join us, um, and it may be more armchair-like um, knowledge. Um, anyway, just an idea. I mean, I know... Doug Highcheck does it. I know he has people he calls on. I know um, Max has a couple of people he calls on and went and talked to at the universities. I tried to reach out, got nothing from the universities, but I want to build a skills team and they don't have to be on camera and they don't have to be, um, you know, out that day. But, you know, we could bring them on camera. We could do a chit chat where we're doing this, a double box stream yard, and we're talking to the researcher who's on the team. And they're talking about a specific segment. And when I'm doing the film, I could go to that film, go to this, a streamlined recorded private live, and then go back to the film. So there's a lot, man, this, this whole possibility is just spinning in my head. Like, you know, why does it have to be me? And what am I missing? And how, how can I get better, you know, um, and be stronger, better, faster sort of thing? Um, no, I haven't started a Facebook group. Um, I, I don't want it that open. I'd rather just keep it to my 12-person 12 person, <laughs> 12 live here and, and, and kind of vet it first this way and use you guys to put the words out. Um, use guys. I'm going to um, – let's see. I'll put the ticker up. There's my email address if you all have anything or know anybody. Um, you know, that may be good or you think would be interested or talked about it. I know I'm talking to like three or four people right here in Florida now um, down in the Mayaka River area, all the way up to, like I said, the gentleman in North Tampa and farther out of people wanting to do things. And for one reason or another, we haven't been able to. But I do like the idea of um, like when I finish chapter seven, like say I finish the next chapter and before just hitting publish, I could just I, I use vet but i'm not saying vetting as in in that use term but just to pre-watch it and say hey was there an opportunity for me to do something insert something say something have a dialogue in the middle because my films it, it my 
you know what I'm doing. I'm pretty much along with the right of who I'm with and I put it all together and I'm not doing a lot of chit chat um, other than my, my, my jokes, <laughs> but that's just me. But, you know, maybe I can up the game a little bit, you know, maybe that could be a little different. So let me, um, let me hit something here real quick. Oh, what am I doing here? Got lost. I don't know if that'll work. Um, there, I just I just put the link in chat. So, uh, Patrick, what you're looking for something profound from a species that's very subtle. Okay. And the point is, I thought Facebook went the way of MySpace. Wow. Yeah. Well, actually, I am doing a double broadcast to Facebook, guys, for the first time. I haven't done that before. So um, I'm just playing catch up here. It can be private. Yeah. Yeah. But say I put out Chapter 7 and, and there were... Um, Three people who signed up, or or I think would have input that I that I think would have input that could just screen it and just say, yeah, you're good, you're ready to go, or hey, you missed this. Like I noticed the last one, like uh, chapter five, I think. Um, um, Sasquatch Adirond Adirondacks caught the the second music track was real loud, and it's because I didn't know it was in there. I had uh, copied it and, you know, anxious to get it posted. I felt like I was late. I had dropped it three levels down on the timeline. It was out of view and it was set at full volume. So it just kind of trashed the whole. So sorry about that. But there's a lot of good audio in there. And, you know, I won't cover up audio if it's uh, if it's with like audio. So I, I did want to tell you that. Um, but stuff like that. So hang on. Let me let me just roll through this here in a minute. Um Hey, Sean's in somewhere. Um, uh, da, 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 um, Sanders talking rock photography. All right. All my stuff was at Lakeland Civic Center back in the day. Yeah, I know, Patrick. It's, it's something. I'm not. Well, I think so far I have found quite a few profound things. You know, I. I, I think what I'm going to do moving forward is, um, you know, I, I'm really torn on the vetting process because it's it's real difficult. And I think it's best just to not claim anything and just put it under the category of high strangeness and put it out there because I, I it, it, it was hard for me to send audio out to these people and ask them to spend their personal time you know, doing me a favor. And they did. Um, I, I got two really good people and I haven't talked about it yet. And I, I, I don't even know if it's worthwhile talking about it to tell you the truth, because in the end, I realized it doesn't really matter. It's, it's not good enough because I didn't get the thing making the howl. You know, I didn't get the thing that made the footprint. So no matter what evidence we come up with guys, there's going to be, um, you know, your critical thinkers or whomever, your skeptics, just, just, you know, throwing a dagger through it. And, and, and I get that. And I get that. And I, I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I totally get it. But so at one point, I would rather have a local team, a team I trust to do the best vetting they can and call it an impression and not a footprint. Um, call it a howl and not a Bigfoot howl and just leave it at that and do the best we can. But I will tell you, two people in the Bigfoot world vetted the howls in chapter five. And to their opinion, they seem legit. To their opinion, they don't seem like anything that's in my area. Um, their opinion is it could be a possible squatch. Awesome. Um when I ran that by a couple people telling them what the possible result or what the results was from two people we all value, um, 
man, I got I got a lot of kickbacks still. And I was like, oh, well, <laughs> what's the betting then? I don't get it. So, and I do get it. It's just like, it's not good enough. And and Leon even said last week, you know, when I did my rant, he goes, well, why are you hanging on to it? Well, I'm hanging on to it because no one's told me it's not, or no one can tell me it's not a Sasquatch howl. And so it's a howl. It's an interesting strangeness of a howl. Um, and now I can say, yes, I vetted it to two people who did spectrograph analysis and um, they think it's legit. Okay. I got the footprint vetting and that's not back yet, but I do have people looking at the print. Um, but again, it's not going to be good enough. It's like this picture here of the profile in the book in the in the nest. It's not good enough. Um, there's no movement. You know, to me, Carrie Arnold's photo, not good enough. It's not good enough. I don't even think it's as good as this one. But it's just, we need to do better. But we're all trying. Carrie's out there trying. I'm out there trying. Max is out there trying. Um, Brent's out there trying. But, man, it's in, and there's a new guy Brent turned me on to that's awesome. That kind of you know, is out there like on his third film now and he's great. And he's just, you know, Hey, I'm out looking. He, he's, I'm just like, yeah, I, I learned these plants. I don't know what kind of plant that is. I don't know what kind of tree that is. I don't even know if a squatch could eat that. Could he survive here? I don't know. I'm not doing that because my mind is on 30 seconds of movement. That's all I care about. And even as I talk to you tonight about everything else, I'm only interested in one thing, video, 30 seconds of movement, definitive proof as good as the patty film. That's all I'm after. But I know there's a lot more that goes to this. So that's what I'm trying to do is build a virtual team. Or is there possible to build a virtual team that would be willing to um, look at these videos before I post them? You know, and call it like you see it. And I don't care if you call it bad and say, take that out. You're an idiot. We'll, we'll discuss it. But you'll still be on the credits. I mean, because you're, you're giving feedback. And that's what I, that's what I'm looking for. Is that possible? Is it a dumb idea? I don't know. I don't know. So let me see what's going. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm totally ignoring the chat. Anyway, that's what this is about. We're up to 19. So uh, it's building a virtual team for those of you who just joined us. Can it be done? Is it worth talking about? Is there someone at home that's in that may have studied? Uh, flora and fauna in college and, and, and still goes out and, and collects specimens and are really good with that. I want you come help me with the films. Um, hunters. I need a hunter on the team. I need a tracker. Um, those people may only go out once out of the next four films. That's fine. Um, I just want to build people that I can count on. So that that's kind of pretty cool. Uh oh, Brenton. Hi, and Steve. Awesome. Great. Matt, I was thinking of reaching out to Amy Boo with her Zoo Book project. That's a good option for us to help that. Uh, I tried. You uh, good luck. You know, I didn't get anywhere with that. So um, but I love Amy and I invite her on the show. I invited um a couple times and just haven't been there. So they're in your circle, but they're not in mine. That's the point I'm trying to make. And I'm doing all of this and don't have time to go fetch people. So I'm putting it out tonight. I want a team just as good, someone with just as good as the knowledge of Amy. And if it's Amy, that's great. If Brent wants to come on with Amy, that's even better. But I want to be able to share films possibly. What I'm thinking of is actually putting my videos on private, sending the link out to three or four of these team members and say, boom, did I miss anything? And I'm not going to be talking all through my videos because I don't know the plants and stuff to be talking. I'm not a smart person when it comes to that. So do I want to go out there and start chat chatting all over my video like I did with the nuts and say, oh, these are acorns. Oh, no, they're walls. <laughs> you know, it's like, shut up, Matt. Just, just film. You're there to film. I'm there to capture movement. I am the gunslinger. I am there to capture movement. That is my role. And I'm looking for people with other roles. But Amy would be awesome. And I love blue. I would love to be a part of Blue Book, but um, you know, nobody knows who I am, so that's fine. Uh, let's see. Um, 
Yeah, and and that's what I'm saying. Even someone involved in actual research or writing uh, theses and and documents of research and and helping out with that. Um, sorry, I lost my breath there. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, I don't know how many chapters my series is going to go. There could be two more. There could be thirty more. I don't know. I will stop working the corridor when I think I'm done with it. Um, but there may be someone at the, at the back end, Brent, that when I look at all this and stuff and you go, you know, I really, I really got some potential possible evidence. The howl's already fallen to the potential evidence file. Um, the footprint or impression actually possibly falls into the possible evidence file. Um, last year with Max and Tim T and the whole mid Florida group, you know, we found some strangeness that you know, I started this series after all that, but I may need to go back and visit just to bring it into the series because they were shot in the corridor and it is good evidence. And I'm leaving that out of the series. So my mind is trying to figure out how to go back and capture that. So I don't know if it's going to be chapter seven. I don't know if it's going to be chapter eight. I don't know if it's going to be chapter nine, but I'm going to go back and look at the two years of potential evidence I have, which we call in the TV world business, the sizzle reel sizzle reel my coffee has arrived she's awesome you're the best you want to say hello to everybody no no <laughs> um i'm building a sizzle reel and so what made me think of that was the floating branch that we caught you know the 60 pound branch that's landed on you know a sapling no bigger than that and there's a 70 pound branch broken off out of a bigger tree, which I didn't see which tree that it would even possibly fall out of 20 feet off the ground suspended over. It wasn't even a trail. It was off trail, but suspended over an area that an open area that would be the trail because there's no other place to go. Um, 20 minutes after I said, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we found this Y branch stuck in a tree and I stuck it in a tree like this 20 minutes later, it's in a tree like this floating in the trail in a ridiculous, I'm saying it's the most high strangeness I've seen to date. It beats the howls. It beats the impression I shot in chapter five. It is so freaking weird. To this day, the hairs stand up on my arm when I talk about it. Because then there was nine of us, at least nine of us there. And I'm going to go back and bring that film in there. So, you know, the opening I have now that I ran, I want to go back and just bring in all the highlights, just do a highlight reel that would just like, wow, wow, what is that? Wow, wow, instead of just sipping coffee and that sort of thing. So that's one thing I wanna do too. Um, so there's a lot of, but um, Raptor Search and Rescue would be a good idea too. Yes, and I am actually on the CERT local team, CERT, uh, Search and Rescue. So that's why I forget water is because, <laughs> because I'm carrying so much safety gear that I probably don't know how to use thoroughly. So anyway, let's go up here and see what people are doing. I've been talking too much, but that's the topic tonight. If you know of anybody, my email's on the bottom. Um, if you know anybody that would possibly want credit in a film, upcoming film as, and I'll put your specialty, you know, I'll, I'll say Sandra Piper, Central Florida, Aero reconnaissance, Google map, um, you know, Google earth expert, whatever, you know, that's another thing. You know, is there an expert in Google, Google Earth? You know, someone that can really say, hey, Matt, this is where you've been. I was just looking. Did you know you're really close to X, Y, Z? What about historical structures? Mike tells me this all the time. Matt, where were the native people here? Where were their camps? Um, where were, the, um, you know, where did they live? What tribe was it? And I go, I don't know. Where's the ley lines? Are there any ley lines going to? I don't know. My mind is on 30 seconds of moving video of this thing that everybody calls Sasquatch, Bigfoot, the skunk ape, the skunky doodle. I don't care. Um, but those are all valid points, and I'm not doing a good enough job. Um, I'm already focusing on just the camera work, and I'm being told it's not a good enough job. So I get it. Um, but I want to continue to focus on the camera work, but I want to bring in some other people too. And I'm just saying... Um, those sound like some really good projects. Yeah. Um, so anyway, what did I miss in here? If if I missed something, uh, Sasquatch Wizard Adirondack. I'm driving, but wanted to say hello to everybody. Well, hello, buddy. 
if you're not following this guy's channel, he has a good channel. He's getting ready to release a film too on uh, on tree breaks. So I'm trying to hook up him and Max. I don't think I know your name. I call everybody by their handle anyway. Hmm. Boy, that's hot. I think she burned. She must have zapped it an extra three minutes. Um, but anyway, uh, if you're not watching his channel, go check it out. Great channel. And he's doing a, a whole bit of film on tree breaks and the, the breakdown of tree breaks. So that's going to be really good. Again, taking a specialty like that and zeroing in is great. Um, I like that. Um, I like hearing them. I like trying to figure out what it was, but you know what? You know what I noticed the other day that freaked me out. I had someone at the station. We have these really super long hallways and we have someone at the station and I went, I went like that. And I, and I, and it, as soon as I did it, I went, Oh, oh crap. I've heard that. And I haven't heard anyone talk about, I've heard about them talking about doing it with your mouth. I heard about teeth chatter. I've heard about tree knocks and light tree knocks. I'm getting these light ones. And you know what they sound like? That's exactly what they sound like. More woody. But sometimes I can't I can't snap. But wait, see, I can't do it. Um, imagine if your hand was three times the size of mine doing that. What would that sound like? You know, is it just a... I now see. But anyway... Um, yeah, I want to I want to I want to get into that more. But anyway, when I heard the audio, I freaked out because I, I you know, I was like, could that have been a If I don't think about it, it sounds pretty good. Okay. Hey Raptor, how you doing? You better watch out, I'm going to kick you out. Just kidding. <laughs> uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was going to reach out to Tim. Um, I started about six months before Tim died. I was just getting ready, caught up in his videos. Some I thought was really, really cool. Some I just totally laughed at. But either way, I had a great time watching his videos. He was a Central Florida uh, Bigfoot guy. A um, lot of drama, liked to stir things up. Um, but man, he was fun to watch. He was entertaining for sure. Hey, Jay, how you doing? Good. Hope you're feeling better. Sorry. You know, I pick on you all the time when you're on the shows, but it's just because I love you, man. You're funny. I thought you were going to fall asleep though the other night. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, Fasterman's here. Hey, how you doing? Matt, if I was still in Florida, I would love to be to be your tracker. I am a professional at that. Did it, did it for years as a professional predator. Trapper, wow. Huh. Well, you know what? Maybe, um, I don't know. Did you look at the impression I got in Chapter 5, the 3D model I did? Oh, that's another thing, Steve. You're listening, I think, maybe still, maybe possibly. Anyway, um, I found a source that teaches and does 3D printing. Uh, I forgot to call them back Friday. Um, Friday at work was really crazy, but I'm going to pitch the idea of me coming out there and seeing if the scans I got are even coming off coming off the iPhone Pro 13 with the uh, with the 3D model apps if they're good enough for printing and what they can print them at size wise and then how to get them off because I don't know any of that. But anyway, I do have a meeting or a call set to discuss that and I plan to go by and do that because man, wouldn't it be neat if I could get a 17 inch print of that 3D model I have in chapter five. Um, man, that'd be nice for the wall, huh? That'd be cool. Um, Curious says, you stand there looking cute, and when something moves, you shoot. Exactly. That's another thing uh, we're talking about doing is um, less movie-movie and more city-city. So um, we actually had something planned that already tentatively got canceled, uh, uh, what we call a night sit in our little group. And, uh, man, I was looking forward to it. I was, I, I reluctantly said, sure. And I'm going, yeah. but uh, yeah, I was going to do it. I'm still going to do it. Um, I was going to take the um, 270 blind and uh, we're still going to make that happen. We're still going to do it. Um, I'm not going to do it solo. Uh, Becky, my wife gets really freaked out. I don't blame her. Um, 
you know, things can happen out there. And I, I am on serious medication sometimes just for heart, not, not mental. Um, I know what you say, Steve, but it's not for my brain. It's for something else. Um, yeah, I already talked about, uh, Brent said, the search and rescue. Yep, yep. I kind of got that covered. I, I'm a ham radio operator, too. So, But, you know, I haven't taken a ham radio with me. I carry too much stuff. But should I? I mean, mine's a $600 mobile handheld, which if you into ham radio, that's a serious ham radio. Um, but I also built it for portability, and I have the, I um, can't remember the name of it. J antenna something where you got the rope and you throw the rock over the tree and you string it up and it runs right into the back of your, bottom of your your ham radio so that's pretty cool i know how to do the scan i can get out so an emergency that would be cool um yeah yeah i know who you're talking about i know and i know that's all you know everybody's busy i get it i totally get it yeah 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 Brent's in here he's always he's always giving me good stuff uh, yep, saw that one. Oh, this is good. Kara scripted. If you find footprints on Tuesday and the and the family of tourists is only there on Sunday, you will never find what made them. Good point. I can guarantee you, where I was on the Florida Trail, there, there, there. That's not the case. Yep. Yep. Botanist too. I agree. I want all of that. I want it all. Because, you know, there's probably, you know, there may be a botanist watching our channels. Like, I know when I watch other channels, um, Brent, even the new guy you sent me, what was his name? Um, anyway, I, I friended his channel, watched his three videos. Um even him, you know, because he's not in the, the tree structures yet or anything to do with trees. And, man, he was blown by a, a, a lot of stuff that would have caught my eye. And I didn't want to throw that in his chat, but I was seeing a lot of stuff I would have stopped and looked at. Um, because I'm also doing a fine art project with um, forest language, as you guys know. I've been saying it forever. You know, I'm, I'm looking for Bigfoot with 30 seconds of movement, but I'm also doing a fine art project and shooting... Um, you know, Mother Nature and, and what it does. Um, so that's kind of cool too. But man, if someone, where I was going with it, that I was seeing a lot of possible structures or manipulations or just, you know, weird Mother Nature happenings that I would have loved to photograph. And I think he should have photographed them. Maybe he did and he's not talking about it. Maybe he doesn't have, you know, the Bigfoot on the brain with the tree, you know, which is great if he doesn't because there were obviously no meaning to him. And I found that really refreshing that someone wasn't pointing out every little bend. Um, look, there's a bend, you know, which we all know doesn't mean much. Uh, that's my Audubon bird clock. Um, the evidence needs to lead you to the thing that created it. Yeah. But what I was getting at, I, can't, I keep forgetting to say it, is that maybe someone's watching my videos and are seeing something I'm blatantly missing. Like maybe a tracker is seeing something that, I should have looked at, or maybe um, I was out with Stan. Um, I haven't done that. That's my, that may be, I don't know if there's a chapter in that or not, but Stan and I spent a day, half day together. And uh, he was like, it was a one time I wore shorts. And he goes, you always go in shorts? I, don't, I just did today. I was hot, you know, it's summer. And he goes, yeah, you're, you're walked off through poison ivy. <laughs> Thanks for telling me now. But... <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, maybe you're seeing stuff that I should be looking at. And uh, it'd be nice to get that kind of feedback. You know, I don't, you know, I don't care if someone says, hey, man, you might want to look at that. Like I did jump on uh, Brent. I'm sorry. I don't know your friend's name who started that channel. But there's a lot of dead trees going across the whole creek in the background. And I was just telling them, man, go check out those trees that are the big windfalls that are across those creeks. Because maybe right before them or on them, there will be impressions. Um, and he said, no, I hadn't thought about that. I'll look at that in the future. So uh, anything like that. If you can use evidence to push your investigation to, to more evidence and contract, then it helps. If it does not help, even you push forward, then it, it is not good enough. You know? Well, the bottom line is what all of us are doing is not good enough. So I'm trying to figure out 
how to change the game. I don't want to keep doing months and months and months of doing it wrong, thinking and expecting different results. We've all heard that cliche, you know, stupid is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Um, don't have to make claims, just theories that can push further, uh, further breaching observations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I agree with that. And, and like I say, there's, there's, there's stuff we're missing because I'm never talking about food sources. Um, you know, there's, there's channels out there who talk about, um, the supernatural and skinwalkers and all that stuff. But, you know, no one's talking existence, survivability, um, habitat, um, you know, I have a couple of theories, you know, people are dishing the Florida heat saying it's too hot, but, you know, have you ever laid down in a creek in a swamp? It's like 74 degrees, dude. It's super cool. You can lay, you can lay there all day long. And I don't care if it's 99, and we've never been above a hundred in, in this area, you know, it's never, never, ever in the Tampa Bay area reached a hundred degrees. So we're talking 99 is our record. So when it gets hot out there, you know, I know, look around for gators, take off path, lay in, lay in, lay in Creek. You know, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to kind of bounce back pretty quick. And you got to assume these things know that too. They're not going to stand up and, and sweat their thick hairs off all day. So I think they're very water um, oriented. My, my, my opinion is I think they lay in water a lot. And I've been thinking that for a long time. Um, I think when you lay in water and someone comes by, you can just sink down. I mean, who's done? I'm a, I'm a, used to be a swim instructor. So I know you can float on your back and only have your nose out and breathe. And you can hear everything coming around you. It's almost like the old thing, putting your ear to the ground or, or putting your ear to a train track and hearing a train 10 miles away. Well, water's the same thing. So, and Florida is water. So I really think the water is, is a key here. Um, Iron Dogger. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Play the knock. I don't know what you're not. You're I got lots of knocks, dudes. I mean, I, I got knocks galore. Um, but. I don't know if they're tree on tree anymore. I kind of think they're, they're, um, I can't do my, my hands are sweaty. There you go. Um, also done that before. Uh, but, 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 but I think I'm caught up guys. I don't know. Um, I think people who think Florida is too hot for Bigfoot are really thinking it is too hot for them. <laughs> I totally agree. I agree 100% with that comment. Raptor, Central Florida Bigfoot, I apologize, but if I were you and you were going to a particular area, find out what kind of sightings and sounds and everything before you go, how recent they were, that might help. You know, I just don't believe in that. I think you're, I, uh, the only analogy I can give to that is, Okay, we go to Charleston a lot. We used to go to Charleston a lot. And somebody would say, hey, Barbara Streisand uh, last week was just staying or ate at the hotel across the street from uh, the Meeting Strand Inn. It's a, a restaurant called Pugin's Porch. And the people said, hey, Barbara Streisand was in last weekend and, uh, you know, rented the whole restaurant from four o'clock till nine o'clock, cleared out the whole restaurant, paid the staff and had a private um, meal there with her husband. They came up in horse carriage and everything. That's like me saying, I'm going to go back there and, and hope Barbara Streisand comes back. That's just illogical to me. Um, I could tell you where the impression was I caught last week. That's like you rushing there thinking it's going to come back. I, I, I think it's, if anything, it was just moving through. Um, of course, maybe not this area because this area was really damn spooky. I'm telling you that now, but I don't, I don't know. I, and it's also a bias to some point, because if you know that, 
if I go to an area and know there's been a sighting within two years, I, okay, one year, I don't care. That's a long time. Uh, one month, maybe. One month would mean something to me. Um, but to say there was a sighting there 10 years ago and you go hang out at the sighting and say, this is where it happened in 1990, I don't get it. I, I It doesn't interest me at all. It really, I, That's just me. I don't know. I don't know why. It just doesn't interest me. Um, I think I'm hitting some of these again. Presume Bigfoot is as large as people say. There is a lot of heat mass to stabilize temperature. Yeah. Patrick says 103 to 107 there. That sucks. Lost cryptids. Hey, Matt, good show and points. You guys, I, I lost cryptids on at night real late. They're like on 11, 1130. And uh, I think they get a lot of replay, but there's usually a few of us in there, regulars. And uh, it's always good stuff, man. He, he um, throws out some uh, native language, which is really cool. The one I know is Howl. <laughs> Howl. <laughs> it's like a greedy. That's what I'm going to use. I mean, if it's been around 300 years with the Indians and on TV, that's what I'm going with. I don't know any others, but at least you have some, you're armed with actually more knowledge. So that that's awesome. But you all should check out Lost Cryptids. I, I consider their channel. Um, you know, that's another thing, guys, is I'm watching very few channels anymore. Um, if they're butt crazy, butt ass crazy, whatever you want to call them. I don't have time for it. You know, I'm, I'm here to learn and, and move forward. So if they're not moving me forward, I'm not going to watch them. Uh, just an adapter. There is a, there is a ribbon wire that fits through the side. Let's look for that conversation. Who's he talking to? Patrick Noble says, curious, do you use a jumper wire? Hmm. Something's happening here. Here says, I've been using a C battery with a recorder that uses triple A's. It pushes a record time out to about nine days. Record time out to about, huh? Some tricks going on, some secret tricks. You all got to like watch these chats closely. Steve has some ideas. So anyway, um, links in the chat. Anybody wants to come on? Um, you got my email scrolling on the bottom if you want to come on or if you want to um, email me, maybe you already have. Um, and just because you email me doesn't mean you're going to be on my virtual team. I'm still going to um, find out. What's... I mean, I want to have a dialogue, you know, what you can bring to the table and, and how we all can uh, be a part of this. But there's no reason why. Um, Someone who can't get out on a hike with us can't be a part of our team. Um, hey, and and you could be as far away as Iron Dogger and be a part of the team. I don't care if you're in Alaska. If you got time to move through some footage, to uh, give pertinent advice, to say I missed something, to say I need to go back to something, maybe someone has seen something that I've already moved on and I need to be there more. Maybe someone's going to say, hey, well, you know, in chapter five, you moved from one area to chapter six with Max deep in the corridor. You need to be back to chapter five because at least you have an impression and you have three howls. So, um, and let's talk about it. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't have a thought on um, migration versus staying in one area. I don't think... You know, my guess is I think they're smart enough to know what hunting season is, you know. Um, I think they know the places that are open to hunting, you know. I Let me get this thought out. I think they know where to stay out of when they need to stay out of. And that means, if you think about it, that means the state parks are safe havens. So I've had a lot of people give me feedback saying, well, you're never going to see a Sasquatch map because you're in a state park. Well, that's illogical to me um, for that for that very reason. If hunting season is open in, the, in a section of the Green Swamp at one period or another, um, where are they going to go? They're going to push down to the corridor. Well, why? Well, because the corridor is only a mile wide and there's no hunting in it and it runs through neighborhoods or you know state highways anyway. 
but there's no hunting. So you don't think a super smart being would know where to stay out of during certain times of the season. Uh, so it's that sort of thing. Um, that's where my mind's gone. I'm, I'm kind of moving past some of this of uh, just going out and chasing historic sightings area. There is one place. There is one place I'm interested in going. I have not been yet, um, which was a campground that had a sighting with a bunch of kids. Um, it happened probably 30, 40 years ago. It's a long time. Why I'm interested in it is because it's placed right in the middle of my line that I have drawn for the corridor, for the actual corridor, where I think movement has to happen and where it would be safe for movement to happen. It falls on that line, and there happens to be a sighting. Now, I have not researched all the other sightings to see how many sightings fall on this line that I'm drawing a hypothesis on um, to see if my thought process is correct on that. But hey, if someone wants to do the legwork on that and help put that puzzle together, there's, you know, there's all every researcher out here from Brent to, you know, Steve, who helps out people and give his advice to Sasquatch Wizard and Arondox to Iron Dogger. We all have multiple projects going on that we all can't just bury ourselves in. But maybe someone out there would say, hey, you know, that's that's my expertise. I could I can do that for you. And, you know, you'll, you'll be credited in the next film as, you know, part of the team. So I just want to throw that out there. I think it's kind of pretty cool. I mean, I would have done that. I would have jumped on anything to get a, get a part of someone's team and and that sort of thing. Uh, let's see. How long have I gone? Oh, wow, that's an hour and one minute virtual dumbass ramble. That's hilarious. Well, 320 is the record, so maybe I can beat it. Um, so I had a good day today. What'd you guys do? We went to uh, Airstream, hung out. We got to get some repairs done So uh, on the trailer. So we did that. Lower my camera a little bit. So we went to Airstream and we got some repairs. I got a roof um, probably needs resealed because our we're out in the Florida heat and it's not covered. So all that little soft caulking, it's not caulking, but you know what I mean, sealant um, around the air vents, the air conditioner, um, the window seals um, starts getting brittle and it can cause leaks. And I saw one little drip starting to happen around one of my fantastic fans. So um, anyway, so it's getting time to do that. And I'm looking at a hitch situation because of my knees. I can't carry the... Um, I could no longer carry the receiver um, that you put into the truck that you'd back up to and then drop the airstream on it. I don't know what that thing weighs. It may might as well be a hundred pounds to me because if I lift that from my shed, carry it to the driveway, put it on my truck, take a trip, get to the campground, take it off, secure it, do whatever. Three, four days later, come home, take it off the truck, drag it all the way back to the shed. My knees are blasted. So I'm trying to figure out how to remedy that. So I think I have a plan, but it's a $2,000 fix. It's called a, um, what is it called? Herschel popped in my mind, but that's not it. Anyway, it's where the all the equipment stays on the trailer and not on the truck. So coming out of the truck is just your, your um, square hitch part. Um, and, and you just back right into the receiver, which stays on the airstream the whole time. So I'm trying to do that. we got to get the ceiling done. Um, there's some running lights we got to get done. You know, it's a 2008, so, uh, you know, <clears throat> got to do some maintenance on it. So it's hitting the old pocketbook pretty hard. Um, really hard actually. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, and you can be part of it, too, with tree breaks. You know, there's no reason why we can't help each other out, help out each other. Maybe that's an idea. That could be cool. Uh, Matt, you're pushing things forward, and that's awesome. Or farther, or, or farther back. I don't know. I really don't know. Lost crypt. Exactly, Matt. Hunting season isn't a big deal, in my opinion. Here in Michigan, they hang out closer to roads and houses on the trailheads, you and you can't shoot in those directions. Private property, you know, exactly. And I have noticed that here. Um, no animal is going to stay out in hunting season, where especially in the green swamp, it's a big place. Don't get me wrong, 
But in the green swamp, I, I need to show you all a video of what the green swamp looks like during hunting season. Imagine a Jeep with a double-decker rack system on it with a guy standing on it 30 feet off the ground um, located every half mile down the road, right? And there are places you can't even hike. You can't. We can't go in there at all during those times because it's hunting season. So how do you think the Bigfoot's going to hunt? He's not going to be in that area. I don't think. I, I think they got to know where to move and where it's safe. And uh, that's the corridor. Sorry, but I think that's if, if they exist, it's got to be or what or or what um, um, LCC just said there. Um, I drew a blank on your name. I started to say Brad, but I know that's not right. Um, totally having a mind fart. Sorry about that. <sighs> You need a list of probable knowns to work with that allows for strategy. Hmm. Hmm. In a in a way, that's kind of what I'm seeing. I'm finally seeing that. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm yeah. I, okay. I agree with that. Um. Jay says, Matt, I'd like to venture uh, with you, but I need a stump to set on every 50 feet. <laughs> Dude, there are tons. Of... <laughs> that is not a problem here. You might have a snake under it, but <laughs> that's not a problem here. Just wear underwear. That's a little tip. But um, yeah, Mike came down here. Tactical Bigfoot Research came down here and, and went out with Tim T and I a year and a half ago. And uh, Mike was wearing. Um, kind of like a low top sneaker boot, I think at the time and wasn't wearing snake boots. And I think he was a little concerned because we showed up in snake boots to the knees and he was just kind of walking out in front one time. I went, whoa, 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 wait, what are you doing? He goes, well, he just looked back. He goes, what? And I went, when you step over a log in Florida, you need to see the other side before you step over it because you're going to step right on a diamondback rattler or worse, you know? Um, so anyway, he slowed down after that because he was just stepping up. I, you know, I sometimes step up on logs, look, and before I place my foot because I'm real careful. And, you know, and this is no lie. I think in two years I've only seen like three snakes. I, I have not seen any snakes. So only a couple times with um, Ron and, um, and Chris Connor that time I went out with them, did we walk in Palmetto that was chest high and you couldn't see your feet. And I didn't like it because I normally – like to see where I'm placing my feet. Um, yeah, that's just a no brainer to me, but, um, anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm working on the, yeah, you know, I don't know, you know, do we, do we have any knowns? I mean, I know I picked up something today. Um, I went to REI Y'all see these little maps, you know, you can get. These are really cool, waterproof. So I bought this thing, and this one happens to be a section of the Florida Trail. And I did not know that we were very, 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 very close to a primitive camp. Um, when Joey and I caught those howls. So interesting. So I will like to go back and check out a certain primitive camp and say sightings, what have you, go back and uh, search uh, uh, Google image for just that campground, start looking at other people's photography. You know how people go on Google image and post images. Someone else was talking about going to, um, it might, might have been Brent. Um, or Leon, it was one of you. I think it was Brent talked about using apps like All Trails and um, following other people's, you know, because sometimes they do blogs and they leave comments on there and they'll talk about, you know, hearing this or that. And yet they don't have Bigfoot on the brain. So it doesn't even cross their mind. You can pick up stuff that way. Um, but this one's pretty cool. It's just a very, very small section of, of the Green Swamp. Um, but it's, it's really cool. And, um, 
there's some things on here I saw today that I did not know that I really should know before, <laughs> before I'm going out there. But, you know, I'm, I'm a one track mind, guys. And you know what it is 30 seconds of movement. I don't really care about anything else. But I know I should. And we're going to um, try to bring in everything else. So, Jay, yes, we can uh, we can find a bench for you. No problem. There's lots of those. Um, anything else going on? I don't want to sit here and ramble if we got. If anybody wants to uh, chat or come on. Max, I don't know. I've seen you in the chat if you're listening. You always tell me off. You're honest with me. Um, I'm trying to play catch up here. Uh, what is this faster man man i believe it is real i also know a lot of people lie i do know and have contact with the best behavior investigators in the world i have no mention i have no mentioned this before time to call out everybody yeah yeah <laughs> uh, i'm never gonna i should never have told that story <laughs> Uh, if y'all haven't heard that, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's alive way, way back, but there's eight of us and I'm the youngest. So the two ahead of me were two, two uh, sisters. So <laughs> we had to use what they used. Okay. It's legit. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't control that. Uh, Patrick says, Matt, I never wanted this to exist. I have a lot of knowns I never wanted to know. Well, I'm kind of, uh, you know, this series between um, the location Max and I are working when he was last down here, and I'm going to wait. I'm not going to wait. I mean, I got to move on, but when he comes back, um, we're going to hit this area again and do some night sits and it's going to involve kayaking and, and that sort of thing. Um, we got to be careful because it's not like in the corridor, there are many places where you can do a night camp. Um, so it's got to be total lights out <clears throat> or red light at best. Um, yeah, and I don't. And the other thing I don't know, and maybe you guys, what are y'all? This is this is what's throwing me off. So so you look at a map like this, right? You're going down the highway. I go down the highway, and my wife is driving. I see break X's. I see really good stuff. Teepee, full blown thirty foot tall teepees with five trees pushed in together. You know, in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, whatever. Yeah, you can go to your map real quick on your phone or be ready and start dropping pins and quickly write a description of what you saw, right? I mean, that's what I do. Um, I have another app now that I use that's even better, <clears throat> but you can do that. But where do you go to find out the woods beside you as you're driving down the road, whether it's private, water management, or a farm? Um that would be, I mean, if someone's got a real estate background or deals with commercial land and and knows how to, um, you know, plot a course for us on a river where it's safe to stop, that would be good knowledge to have, wouldn't it? You know, I don't want to end up in jail. Not when I work for a TV station. That would not be very good. Um. Hey, Papa Craig, how you doing? Jay Fritz is in here. Iron Dog are still in here. Man, I appreciate it. We're up to 28. Wow. Uh, for an unplanned, unannounced uh, Sasquatch and Erotic. Uh, Papa Craig, Patrick Vaughn, Faster Man, Texas Jack. Hey, how you doing? What'd you say? I missed you. I could fill a VW Beetle with the water moccasins I run into in the big thicket. But sadly, there is no market for water moccasins filled with beetles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't even even on the kayaks, guys. I don't. I've heard I've heard people kayaking and uh, you know, going under low branches like we we run into all the time and having snakes drop in the kayak. Um, I've seen that. I've seen you know, 
on video. It happened to coworkers at work where they're, um, what did they do? They went under a tree. One of the oars smacked something. Oh, they got attacked by hornets. They got they got rushed by hornets. So here they are on the river, and hornets are just stinging them and buzzing them all over the place. And the whole boat went on over. And uh, I miss all the good times. That would have sucked with my gear, guys, because that's about fifteen hundred dollars. Of course, I use dry bags, but still. Yeah, Iron Dogger says I have an Alaska Native Primitive Camp near me. Hey, Tuesday, Tuesday's a big day here in the um it's Native People Day or something like that, right? Someone should do a show on that. It's paying homage to um to the people before us of all the land we took. Um, let's see. Oh, Patrick said uh, the answer to the map. Sorry, I'm not paying attention here. I uh, wonder what kind of hornets. I don't know. I wasn't there. Sasha tried to run a Mary Wilson. Hey, Matt, Jay. Uh, Matt, I have lots of uh, top of maps of Florida lakes that has all the roads leading in and out. Oh, cool. Cool. Um, that might be cool to know. I didn't know something like that existed. So, yeah, shoot me the uh, info on that. Yeah, that would be cool. Um. Oh, uh, let's see. So Texas Jack says, Matt, I think that on on X Hunt app is advertised as filling in that niche on X Hunt. Where's my post it? Oh, I need them. Hold up. You know, I don't go far without post-it notes. Oh. So was that X Hunt? Got it. Awesome. Like that. Like that. We're getting somewhere now. Patrick Vaughn says X Maps also. Sweet. Mary Wilson says Plat Books. Great idea. Um, Juju, that's a great idea. Um, you know what? This is, you know, even to run a show like this and run chat yourself, you need a second person here pointing it out. And I apologize if I miss people. Um, Sasquatch says, Mac Powers, I didn't know you were here. Uh, let's see. I didn't know you were, you were in here, but I will be sending you my rough draft for review. See, there you go. That's what we're talking about. Might be typed by tomorrow or next week for sure. It's done, but in my notes on the phone. But in my notes. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, Max has been a good help for me. And I don't know if you all noticed, but in Chapter 6, um, um, what... In chapter six, there's there's several, several funny places, but um, I like the one where I said, I'm right here by the river, and there's the perch. And like, one, two, three, and Max goes, alleged perch. <laughs> and then there's, there's another spot I did the same thing. So, you know, and that is what we need. You know, I need to quit saying footprint and start saying impression. I need to quit saying... Well, of course, I've never said Bigfoot how. I've always said how. What was it? Matter of fact, in the audio, I said, I think that the second one was a dog. Um, but who I had listened to it, um, you know, doesn't think so. But um, did you all see on my community tab where, <clears throat> this is my voice. Did you all see on my community tab there, uh, the video where I posted um, the late night viewing and the sound of the loon. And I tell you, when I listen to that, there's about a minute in there. It matches in my mind and my ears from what I remember hearing on most of the Bigfoot channels that most of these things are loons. Um, these long howls. Um, if you haven't visited my community tab yet, go look at that. And then if you also Google 
loon sound in movies. There's a great video out on YouTube that talks about all the movies, mostly scary movies, drama that has the creepy stuff going through the woods, the guy with the knife or or the stalking this or that, anything creepy or anything that goes bump in the night. They're playing all these audio sounds um, and they're loons. They're using this loon call that is really professionally, it should be called a loon call is the element of audio of choice for all most scary movies throughout 30, 40 years of Hollywood. And they're basically, there's these bird folks that are upset that the loon is being misrepresented and it's hilarious. But you, you, you sit back and you listen to stuff and you go, wow, I heard that as a Bigfoot call on many channels. Oh, I heard that on as a, a uh, you know, potential Bigfoot call on many channels. So, um, so that got me thinking, okay, Florida Loon, Florida Loon Sounds, and you go through thousands of those. So, you know, that's that's been my week. But man, if you had someone willing to want to do that, if I could throw out like, hey, you know, play my audio with loons and spend a couple hours and do that, you know, hey, you'll get credit on the next film. You know, Loon Audio Re- or Audio Researcher, you know, your name, whatever. Um, that's got some people going here. Let's see. Practice a long howl and go use it. You'll find out. <laughs> uh, uh, Jay says, Florida loons make creepy long calls as do sand cranes. Yeah, see, um, I listed, I fell into the sand crane trap and I was going down that for, oh my God, probably easily 100 calls. I had to listen to sand crane. Because before someone gave me feedback um, on those howls, I was trying to vet it myself. And I did not know about the loon, though. And I did not know about the loon being, um, I mean, they put the loon in places where the, in, in these movies, it talks that Hollywood, it talks about how Hollywood puts the loon as the audio of choice for creepy movies, an area where the loon doesn't even exist. So it's just this audio, like dripping water. That can be anywhere, omnipresent sort of thing. And they're just using the loon that way. And evidently, the bird people don't like it. Pissing off the bird people. Yeah, chasing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm reading the chat. Thanks to myself. I should be playing them for you guys. I'm good. Thank you. Be safe. I'm trying to do the same thing in this jungle. Yep. Uh, Iron Dogger says, I love playing audio at night, especially echoing across the lake. See, and yeah, and see. That's what gets me in the green swamp is that um, Joey contacted me. Was it Joey? Yeah, Joey reached out to me. He he just watched um, he just watched the chapter six with Max and I, and he was in chapter five. And he goes, uh, he just watched the live, and he's getting ready to watch chapter six. And he goes, "Hey, that what you were talking about?" Um, <laughs> it's like. You know, was that me or, you know, this sort of thing. And, I, you know, we were just talking about those calls and stuff. So I forgot where I was going with that. Sorry, I lost my training thought. Yep. I apologize, too, if I missed you. I haven't called you out. Yeah. Uh, oh, where I was going with that was you talked about playing uh, Iron Dog or talked about playing sounds across the lake. Where I was going with that, my mind just clicked back in, is that in the green swamp, there are so many Bigfoot groups out there. I think on any given night, and again, the place is big, so it's not like we have to hear each other. The place is big. But I got to wonder how many times we're hearing each other. You know, who's doing call blasting? I don't know. Um, I know when I went out with, um, with Tate, I mean, he has a scream that will you know, freak you out. Um, he has a wood knocking device that sounds like the real deal of the few I heard that loud, but most of mine again are, are more subdued. Um, um, but you know, how many times are we hearing each other? So that's the thing too. And I think that's what threw Joey and I in chapter five with the three howls was, I think it was like nine o'clock, nine in the morning. Um, but if I look back, that every time I've been in that vicinity, we've had activity going back two years. 
And it's not the area I'm focused on. It's not what I would call the corridor. It's actually out of the corridor. But the corridor feeds out into it. Um, so you can go straight ahead to the place I, that's to me is on my map, which is a, an old campground. Or you can break a little bit to the left towards some housing residential, but still very woodsy and you can get lost in and nobody goes there. Or you can go way out right to the Green Swamp over to Crooked River, uh, Colt Creek State Park. Uh, Florida Trail goes north of that, swings way around out toward Polk County and around. Um, the place is huge, but man, there's a lot of people out there. But um, so that's what gets me skittish is, uh, and, you know, you got to really. Um, like Steve, you would know this. Like, what if someone's call blasting? And let's say my recording of the three howls was a call blast. I don't think it was uh, because of the type answering that was going back and forth. But let's just say it was. It was a call blast. Would a call blast of an original capture on a spectrograph look the same as me catching a second generation or third generation of the call blast? Would that be obvious on a spectrograph or would it, would it still be suspect, potential, this or that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know enough about audio. But something that popped in my head today. Yes, yeah, somebody just said, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you there. I haven't got over there yet. Oh, boy. You guys are a good chat tonight. I appreciate it. Yeah, boy. Uh, bop, 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 bop. anybody else? Patrick going to have me running on one rock. Uh oh, Patrick is going to have me running with one hot on my heels. Yeah, he will give you advice that will get you in trouble. I found. Um, I think he's tried to get me to do a couple weird things, like he told me to put on a raptor suit and run through the woods in the Grand Swamp. I just don't think that's a good idea. But he swore it would probably work. So I don't know. I don't know. Curious says, I would be concerned that calling an unknown howl just a loon. Call, I'd be curious. I would be concerned that calling an unknown howl just a loon, that some Bigfooters would think I meant them. Oh, <laughs> the loon. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. But could a recorded loon still sound like a loon if it was call blasted? I don't know. Go back and listen to my uh, my little quick page where I can post stuff in, the, in that video on the loons. And then also Google loons Hollywood movies. You'll be blown away. And you tell me, you honestly tell me, shoot me an email, text me, whatever. You tell me that that's not more than... 50, 60% of what most Bigfooters are putting out. I guarantee you that's what they're hearing. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't think Max is in here. He's probably just listening. Matt, I will be sending this to you as well, and I'll need Steve's email from Curious Scripted and or you fellows can send it to Steve. Yeah, we can help you out, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, okay. I think we're caught up, guys. Uh, Lost Cryptid, I just got a uh, note that the Lost Cryptids uh, Conservatory is live in 30 minutes, so I will probably pop over there, being it's a... Um, what day is this? Saturday? Saturday, yeah. Saturday. So tomorrow I'm going to be um, washing and waxing the Airstream. Um, we were supposed to go out, but that got canceled. We have a illness in the group or potential illness. Um, what else is happening? Um awful awful week at work one of our um our chief photographer was out on a run and uh 
I just spoken to, you know, day before I see him, I see him every day, every other day for sure. Um, went out on a run and had a heart attack and died. So, um, it gets you thinking. Um, it gets me thinking because I just turned 62. So, you know, <clears throat> I would love to retire. I would love to um, be doing more with the Bigfoot subject. Um, but I'm just not able to pull the trigger on it yet. So it's probably going to be another year or two. But I'm not going to 65. So, you know, I probably have a year or two. But, um, you know, I'm going to make the best of it. I want to get you know, my trailer situation uh, situated because um, these upkeeps on these things, if you get behind like a house or anything, we just got our house. I painted it myself. My knee's killing me. Um, we had brick on the front, red brick, and I painted the whole house white. Everything's white. Trim, gables, windows, everything's white. And um, with some black uh, or dark gray shutters. And uh, man, it looks like a new house. And I tell you, I didn't know how porous the brick was, but they weren't sealed because we have noticed a huge difference in our air conditioning. Um, it was actually crazy. Steve, you're incapacitated and waiting on surgery. That sucks. I hate to hear that. You need to send me your email, man. I don't have a way to reach you other than asking you questions in live chat. And I probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, so anyway, uh, anybody got anything else? Last time to pop in the chat and I'm headed out. Oh, boy. I appreciate you guys coming on. 22 people. Um, that's great. Cool, cool. I appreciate it. And I am going to go over and pop over and uh, give Lost Cryptids a trouble and chat like I like to do. Stir something up. Um, I imagine the overall pattern shape would be the same, but with less fidelity fidelity each progression generation oh on the okay yeah okay it makes sense each generation uh should be an easy enough experiment to conduct though that's going to be for my virtual research team to do because i am out what looking for 30 seconds of movement um but yeah it's just something weird that popped in my head like um and i only say that because um a couple of the people I've gone out with have said they have witnessed call blasting in the green swamp and they have witnessed, uh, now by mind you, this is when, um, uh, I had a group or two, um, you know, doing their thing, doing their, you know, blind sitting lights out sitting sort of thing. And these group walking past them and not even seeing them. Um, and they stayed quiet. They didn't mess with them or anything. We would never do that or they would never do that. Um, but they saw a lot of things that really kind of like made them scratch their heads a little bit that, wow, okay, this is how certain groups are doing it. So, um, you know, they had no idea that they were 30 feet, you know, from these people. So um, that's kind of weird. Okay. I'm going once here. Just checking to make sure I haven't missed anything. If, if I miss anything, just re-say it again real quick. Other than that, I will uh, get out of here in an hour 33 and be respectable. Because Max or Ron will tell me I talk too much. Um, call blasting. But most people are so bad at call blasting that you can hear it is not natural. That makes sense. Cool. Well, guys, um, ooh, shoulder surgery. Mm. My wife had both rotator, um, both shoulders done. So not fun, not fun. J 
Jay, who are you talking about? Who lost uh who lost pitcher? Well, I hear a lot of people claim that. Um actually it happened to Max, I think. Max lost um two separate trips to Florida. He's lost two phones and everything on it. So I don't know. Max ask, ask Max on that. I, I don't know if it's um older equipment, not up to date software. Um I don't know what the reason for that would be. I back my stuff up to the cloud. I pay extra storage on the car, on the cloud. I also have um, two terabyte external drives or four terabyte external drives. Um, I'm editing in Adobe Premiere. I'm uh, I will edit on the desktop that folder with all the elements in it and then once done i move it off to the external drive um that sort of thing so oh look what i bought today this is cool oh god i can't even lift it i seriously can't lift it <laughs> so look at this let me get the glare off It's a handy dandy battery daddy case. Two sided. I started putting my batteries in it because why? We go through a lot of batteries. This thing is heavy and it's not even loaded yet. Just with this in it. And there's a battery tester right there. And I got another one. But I just got that. That that bad boy is going to be loaded. And I'm going to also have my rechargeable ones in there too. So I got that today. Um, I might be selling some gear. I don't know. I might be selling my PK Scout. Is it PK? 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 To BK? Whatever. Um, I might be selling my Scout. I don't know. I might wait until after the night sit, though, because I think having a, a bad flare would be better than no flare at all, but it's, what, 420? It's stupid bad. You can't, you know... Even if I got something walking by um, me at 50 yards, it's it's not evidence. I mean, it'd be movement. It'd be creepy enough for me. I, I would tell it was bipedal, but that's about it. Um, so I may let that go. Um, I'm debating on letting that go and keeping, and keeping my night vision, um, the Bushnell Z2. But I am going to do that night set in the blind. I am going to have both with me. It is going to be, um, the blind's going to be, the blind plus um, camouflage on the blind, to, you know, branches all over the blind where it will be uh, a palm tree um, if you were to walk by it. So I am going to go um, very crazy with that and do a, you know, three, four in the morning type set, get in there at dusk and literally set for, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, 1, 2, 3, sit for like nine hours and not move. So um, I've been wanting to do that. I think that's the way it's going to happen. Um, depends on how good I can set the blind up and and take in all the info that you guys told me about of scent and being mindful of scent and direction of scent and um, into my viewpoint, making sure the wind's blowing, you know, back behind me, not at the, the view I'm doing and stuff like that. So I may get some spray. I may wear all black. Um, I may put a red... Um, if I have to use my phone, I may put a red acetate over my phone to keep that light red. I'll have a, a red helmet on, light on, use it very minimally, if at all, um, and just do a like a nine-hour set. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. So <clears throat> that's going to happen within the next two months. Within the next eight weeks, I'll have that done. Um, and out of my system. And and hopefully that'll help me in, in a lot of ways just get over stuff. So I have some good people working on me with that, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Um, what else do I got going on? Oh, the kayak. Um, I, I tried to go out the last two weekends on the kayak and couldn't, couldn't, couldn't find anybody to go out. Um, Everybody was busy, so that kind of that was a bummer. And really, I should have edited chapter seven, and I didn't. So, I wish I wish I did. 
Steve says, go to settings. Bottom option is phone info. Model and hardware. The Android version is to, uh, Android version to start with. Yeah. Yep. Papa C. Curious. Nana took three pictures of a Sasquatch looking over the bush at her before she could run to me and show me 200 yards. They were gone. The photos were gone or the Sasquatch was gone? I'm assuming you're saying the photos were gone. Mm. See, that's a hard, you know, being a photographer, that's a hard one for, I'm not saying, you know, it didn't happen, but that's a hard one for me to put my uh, mind around. Um, either the photos, you know, didn't happen. I thought I've taken stuff with my thumb and, and wasn't watching um, and thought I was doing this and, and, it, and it didn't take. Um, I think that's operator error, uh, you know, just... I'm sure, I'm sure it happens. I'm not going to say it didn't to anybody, but uh, if it happened to me, I, I think it would be operator error. I can say that. If it was me and I missed it, that's me. Um, and I'm debating, guys. I'm debating. Um, let me know your all's thoughts on this. When I do the night set, Should I take a camera at all or just enjoy the night set? Man, that'd be hard for me to do. My luck, something would just walk right by. I go, no! But, you know, I would be happy of really being a 100% knower um, or a witness or, you know, I've had an encounter. I mean, that would be good enough for me. And then I could get fired up and start really working on, okay, now I know how this thing moves. Now I've seen it. This is the gear I knew. I, I know I need. Um, that would be cool. But what do you think? Leave the, leave the gear at home and go on a night sit and enjoy and just take my uh, water bottle and uh, sit on a nice quiet blanket with all the leaves pushed out around me and uh, sit in the blind and uh, just sit for nine hours. Hmm. What do you think? Camera, no camera. Or maybe just FLIR. iPhone's not going to work that at night unless I hit it with a hit it with a light. Lumix isn't going to work at night. It's doesn't see as well as the iPhone at night. So it's either got to be the uh, Bushnell or the um, or the other. Was Jay say? Um, in my opinion, some folks walk away too much. Some folks walk away. Too Yes. I mean, that's, I do, I know that. And I understand that. I know that's a big thing we're all doing wrong in Florida. Um, I do think um, acting like a bird hunter um, or nature photographer is a hundred percent the way to go. Meaning you're going to have to become a hunter with a camera. You're going to have to know scent. You're going to have to know blind. You're going to have to know, um, like, I know that when I when we do the night sit that I know I need to get my blind out there as early as possible, let it become part of the environment and walk away from it and, co and kind of sneak back to it. I understand that. So um, there's a lot of things that um, I'm working on with that. Um, Steve says for some people a nine millimeter is a comfort blanket. Yeah, that's all I have is a nine. So I will be carrying a nine. So, um, iPhone pro 13 low light camera is a blind watching over a radio sitting in some bush brush, low light camera in a blind watching over a radio radio sitting. Oh, the radio and the blind and the camera. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, no, I'm going to be in the blind. I'm not going to be out in the woods. <laughs> oh, hell no. Not this time anyway. Um, uh, media, hey, how you doing? I was able to capture some amazing stuff with the, with the iPhone Pro 3. Yep. Yep, yep. You're amazed, isn't it? I tell you, and if you stabilize it and put it on a tripod, it's even better. If you move it around at night, it's going to look like every other piece of crap. Um, but you'll see it in Chapter 6 and 7. I'm using the Pro 13 in the low light situation. And you'll notice it only works on the one power. 
Um, you go to wide angle, it goes dark, and you go any, anywhere above 1.3, and it goes dark. So at one point in Chapter 6, I show Max, this is reality. We saw blackness. We couldn't see anything. But the phone saw everything. And I was able to even zoom in 30 yards and debunk two things with an iPhone Pro 13 at 30 yards in the dark. So with a flashlight, though. But it, it's amazing. It's an amazing tool. Um, it's legit now. It's 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 legit. Um, I laughed. Uh, well, my wife up. Becky, you in the chat? One, if you're in the chat. Two, if you're asleep. And I can say this. Okay, Becky's asleep. So um, I have um, my big Lumix gimbal has has gone haywire. I was using it for a TV spot for uh, for the TV station and uh, knocked off a major AM promo spot, thirty seconds, and with lots of gimbal work, and it came out great. I was real happy. Um, but near the end, the gimbal was basically I was I I told my boss I was like. Uh, trying to land a plane on the Hudson. I had one of the gyros go, um, one of the gears, and and I would do, do a double click. And if you're gimbaled like this, you go click, click, and it's supposed to go boop and level out perfect. And then you're ready to go. Well, what happened? It'd level out in about 10 seconds. It'd go and start drifting. Or it'd start this drifting where it starts looking out like that. So there's a lot of things going on. I got through the promo. We edited the piece. Everything's fine. But I think I don't think the gimbal's good, uh, that good anymore. Um, and then the iPhone gimbal, when we found the footprint, um, I guess I was shaking a little more. <laughs> no, when I saw, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, impression. When I found the impression uh, and where we were and how far off trail we were. Um, and when I saw what the river looked like and there's no way you can kayak in this area, I went, holy crap, this is, this is Jurassic Park. This place is legit. And we found the impression I was measuring it and I laid the gimbal down and I started using the iPhone by hand. We picked up our stuff. I picked up my backpack and I walked out. The gimbal is next to the print still. So I'm not walking back in there to get it by myself. So, and I, and there's no one I could tell where we were. I mean, I, well, yeah, actually I do have coordinates of it. Yeah, I do have coordinates of it. Matter of fact, but, I had someone look for it and they didn't see it. So anyway, um, iPhone gimbal gone, but with the Pro 13, it, it handles it without it. You're, you know, I'm not using a gimbal um, in chapter six and seven or chapter seven. I'm not using a gimbal with Max. So yeah. And the reason why I started to tell that story, I laugh, is that um, Mark Newble was talking one night about Larry has a bad habit of leaving... <laughs> Dropping fleers that he has left a, cu a couple of thermal visions in the woods. And I, my comment in chat was, oh, great. Now the Bigfoot has thermal vision technology. Are you shitting me? You have armed the Bigfoot with thermal, you know, back at us. And so I laughed and laughed and he laughed. And and now I'm saying I wrote Mark a, a, a text message the other day. I said, Hey, tell Larry not only do they have a, you know, his FLIR, but they got a gimbal to go. With. <laughs> They're not. They now have stabilized night vision. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Well, Lost Cryptids is on, guys. So I'm gonna pop over there. Um, we should surprise him and a couple of y'all at least give him a shot over there. Um, they work. They work really hard, and I I want to give them some love. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get off here. Thank you all for showing up. I got 24 in the chat. That's perfect. And again, if you want to join the virtual team, there it is on screen right there. And my email is right there moving. Okay. Um, yeah, shoot me an email and let's talk what you what you can offer and we'll talk about it. Don't get mad if I don't select you. I'm, it depends on how many people offer. If I got... Did the offer? I'm going to have to make some hard choices. If I only had two offer, guess what? You're probably on the team. Um, it's kind of like cheerleading. Wait, that's not it. It's kind of like a band practice. There you go. Um, so anyway, thank you all for being here. I'm popping over Lost Cryptids, the Lost Cryptids Conservatory. 
on YouTube. Check it out now. And I'm heading out. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed the show and uh, give me some feedback. I'm just an, you know, an idiot that works at a TV station. So give me a shout. Talk to you later. Bye.